near Finland. And it's the headquarters of Russia's Naval Reconnaissance Air Division. Now, it normally houses heavy bombers and cruise missiles. It's an important staging ground for Russian military operations in Ukraine. On August 21st, an Israeli intelligence firm, ISI, noticed something unusual at Olenya Air Base. Satellite imagery detected the, quote, unusual presence of four Tu-160 Russian strategic bombers there on site. Now, these are strategic supersonic bombers that are designed to carry nuclear weapons. You're seeing the satellite images from Olenya Air Base on your screen right now. Then, just days ago, on September 25th, Israeli intelligence spotted three more Russian strategic bombers at Olenya. These were Tu-95 turboprops. They're one of the oldest nuclear-capable missile platforms in Russia's arsenal. So prior to August, the Jerusalem Post reports there were no strategic bombers at Alinea. Now, as of this week, there are at least seven. Ukraine is now well within the range of both bombers. In related news, the deputy of head of Ukraine's intelligence just determined that there's a, quote, very high risk of imminent tactical nuclear strikes on Ukraine. Now, given all of this, every NATO country now needs to answer a very basic question. How are you going to lower the temperature? How are you going to prevent global nuclear war? It's really the only question that matters. Our leaders, though, have no answer, none whatsoever. Instead of calming tensions, in fact, they seem to be deliberately provoking Russia. Today, Joe Biden once again accused Vladimir Putin of blowing up his own pipeline. You also asked me uh, earlier about the pipeline. And let me say this. It was a, a deliberate act of sabotage, and now the Russians are pumping out disinformation and lies. And at the appropriate moment when things calm down, we're going to be sending divers down to find out exactly what happened. We don't know that yet exactly, but we're not just don't listen to what Putin is saying. What he's saying we know is not true. Okay, don't listen to Putin. Should we then listen to Joe Biden? In February, Biden said this, quote, if Russia invades, then there will no longer be a Nord Stream 2. We will bring it to an end. And then the State Department, Victoria Nuland, she said the same thing. She said, quote, if Russia invades Ukraine one way or another, Nord Stream 2 will not move forward. Now, what's interesting is those threats reveal who has incentive for Nord Stream 2 to come to an end. You see, the reason our leaders would make those threats is because Nord Stream 2 helps Putin. There's no reason for him to sacrifice his leverage over Europe by destroying his own pipeline. On the other hand, we all know who is capable of shutting down his own pipeline. That would be Joe Biden and the Keystone XL pipeline. Now, look, there are those, in all fairness, who say the following. They say this is Russia's way bombing their own pipeline, of constricting supply so that they can jack up global oil and gas prices and then in turn make more money on existing contracts with India and China. But here's a question. Why blow up your own infrastructure? Why not, you know, just turn off the tap? In fact, that's exactly what Vladimir Putin did just a few weeks ago. He shut down the Nord Stream 2 pipeline. There was no gas flowing through a pipeline that now he's being accused of bombing and sabotaging in order to constrict the supply of oil and gas, a supply of which none was flowing through Nord Stream 2. Now, to be clear, I don't know who is responsible for this. I'm just trying to logically follow incentive. And if the U.S. or its allies sabotaged Russian pipelines, it wouldn't be the first time. In 1982, Ronald Reagan authorized the CIA to blow up a Siberian natural gas pipeline using software. So we, American citizens, before we march to a drumbeat directly into global nuclear war, are entitled to answers. You know who else is entitled to answers? Climate activists. You'd think they'd take notice. You'd think they'd ask questions. Why? Because the Nord Stream 2 leak caused more than 300,000 metric tons of methane to enter the atmosphere. Sounds like a lot, right? Here's how much, according to Bloomberg. That's roughly, quote, the same climate impact over a 20-year period as the annual emissions from about 5.48 million U.S. cars. But our leaders, even our green energies are, they're hoping we ignore all of this. And if that's the plan, it just might work. 
because there's so much going on, it's hard to keep track. And what amounted to a crazy day that literally flew under the radar, flew under the weather radar and the news cycle, Russia attempted to annex parts of Ukraine. And then in turn, the U.S. announced new sanctions on Russia. We're announcing uh, new sanctions today as well, that including new authorities to sanction anyone who provides political or economic support to Russia's fraudulent territorial claims. And I've been in close touch with our NATO allies who are united in our resolve to take on his aggression. Once more, let's dare to ask a few critical questions. Let's dare to critically think. Why would more sanctions deter Russia? The last seven months of sanctions have led to blackouts and food shortages in Europe. Meanwhile, in Russia, the ruble got stronger. Oh, by the way, our economy tanked. History has shown, in fact, that from Japan to Syria to Russia, sanctions don't deter, they provoke. And maybe that's the goal. It's the only way to achieve regime change in Russia, which is the stated goal of the Biden administration. Remember, Putin, quote, cannot remain in power, Joe Biden's words, last March. And he means it. In April, Russia and Ukraine had a tentative agreement to end this war. Ukraine could have kept its territory. All they had to do was promise not to become a NATO member because NATO wants to remove Putin from power. But the Biden administration and the UK vetoed that deal. So, again, a critical question. Is this really about keeping Ukraine safe or is it about regime change in Russia? even if that means starting a world war. Today, if there was any doubt left, the president of Ukraine settled that question. He signed Ukraine's, quote, expedited application to formally join NATO. It's yet another slick, well-produced video from Kiev. Watch. На вступ у пришвидшеному порядку в НАТО. Nice pan on the handheld camera. If Ukraine joins NATO, that means world war under Article 5 of the NATO Charter. Millions die. Instead of trying to avoid that catastrophe, our media, though, is telling us that is essentially inevitable. The New Yorker, for example, just published this assessment. Quote Fiona Hill, an expert on Russia, says that we are already fighting in the third world war, whether we want to acknowledge it or not, perhaps save for the whole nuclear holocaust. Over to NBC, quote, historian Michael Beschloss just compared Putin's Russia to Nazi Germany before the start of the Second World War. Why? Because Putin just announced that he's annexing territories into Russia, Ukrainian territories into Russia. Is that comparison fair? Putin to Hitler. NATO thinks so. The foreign minister of Poland just pledged that NATO countries will use nuclear weapons against Russia if Russia's strategic bombers carry out a first strike. He said it doesn't even matter if Ukraine is in NATO or not. And in Washington, you will not find a politician in either party who disagrees on that point. They all believe that defending Ukraine is worth risking Armageddon. Of course, so does Lindsey Graham. He just also compared Putin to Hitler. I hope we'll also send a very clear signal here that we're going to have more aid in the, uh, if we do an omnibus in December, which I hope we will, to fund the government, that we'll have a robust package of military support taking Ukraine into 2023. Have we learned nothing from the last century? What should we have learned? That when it comes to bullies and crazy people who want to you know, put the world under the thumb like Hitler. We should believe what they say. We should stand up to them sooner rather than later. That was Republican Senator from South Carolina, Lindsey Graham. Standing right next to him, Democratic Senator from...